welcome back to a not so normal Edis Diary. Now, we're currently in a lockdown three, days only, no nights, and that basically means I'm out of action. I can't fish, I've been stripped of my fishing rights because the lake I'm on at the minute is too far away. I can't do day sessions there, so it's come to a abrupt halt, so to speak. But we're gonna carry on from after Burfield. So when I was on Burfield, obviously caught the common and I needed somewhere else to go and I, I wasn't, I don't know, I sort of lost the bug for it. I didn't have no target in mind because I thought, honestly thought I'd be on Burfield for a 10 stretch. So although I was confident in the videos, I was confident I'd catch a common, deep down I thought I'd be there until it died and I would never get out of there. So the only way out was if the common died. But as luck would have it, I caught the common and I didn't know what to do next. So I joined uh, the Reading Club Waters next door. We've got Farnham Flynn, Englefield, and I thought I'd have a dabble on there and then Sonning popped up. So I thought I'd go to Sonning and I've done a few weekends on there. Massive pit, I think it's near enough 300 acres. Loads of water that you can't get to, inaccessible. Not out of bounds necessarily, but just you can only get to a couple of areas. But without no real target in there, there was no real drive to pursue doing what I had to do to catch cart from there. Like there was rumours of a few decent ones, but I didn't know the stock and I felt like I was just going there for the sake of it. So I had to stay close to Burfield for the, for the next few weeks, uh, filming and stuff with Avid doing a bit for Cartology magazine, so I ended up fishing on Farnham Flynn, Englefield, but it was too close to Burfield. There was a lot of uh, a lot of shit going about the area at the time, with my capture obviously, and a bit of jealousy I suppose, and although I'd left Burfield, I weren't going to fish it again, I was still right there on Burfield, and I needed to, needed to escape, so I weren't feeling me fishing, and then I had a Weeks holiday booked in a new forest, a folding bridge with my girlfriend Becky and the dog and met a few people on on the Reading Waters and they were talking about a lake that's always been on my mind down in that neck of the woods so I thought I'll tell you what I'm going to have a little, uh, when I go away on my weeks holiday down the new forest I'm going to have a little look over there so we're down there, had a lovely week away, it rained all week but we visited Visited a place, the Jurassic Coast, Lulworth Cove, lovely little cove. It's it's like it shouldn't be in England. Proper, proper lovely, you know what I mean? And then um, from Lulworth Cove we walked up a massive hill, steps and that, people stacking it on the way down. Walked up this hill, we was going to Durdle Door. And uh, we've gone down the hill and you can see Durdle Door in the distance, down a hill which can only be described as that. You know what I mean? So we're standing there, my brother's like, do you want to go down and see that? Like, we've got to get back up again. I was like, yeah, yeah, I need to go down there. I want a selfie, don't I? Like, obligatory selfie shot as a tourist in England. So we've walked down the hill, and then uh, as we're down there, st stood down there for 10 minutes, and we was like, oh, we've got to get back up again. So got back up, and yeah, it's a good day out, to be fair. Loved it down there. Uh, following day, I went, uh, before I've even looked at late, went and got my ticket to Club Water in, uh, down that neck of the woods. And yeah, I got my ticket, had a little quick look at the lake, and then we come home on the Friday, and it took four and a half hours to get home. But when I purchased my ticket on the Tuesday, all I could think about was this, this lake, yeah? And it's got a known carp in there, big, big, big fish. It's probably 62 pound at the minute, I reckon. It's been 60 pound in the past, but the plan was to hit it in the winter. I started in October and I was gonna go right through until the spring and then pull off because it gets busy. So I'm down there, like I've, like I've left um, the new forest, took the bird and the dog home. It took four and a half hours, went back to mine, got all my kit loaded and I drove three and a half hours back to the new forest to have a dabble in this water. Now the lake was busy. I ended up in a big bay, all right? Pissing down with rain stuck in the bay, didn't move, had the, had the door down all weekend, 
looking at my old letterbox and yeah it was a proper waste of a journey waste of diesel but i wanted to be there since i bought my ticket i couldn't stop thinking about it so i've done the weekend in there set up in the rain about 11 o'clock at night packed up sunday in the rain and then went home and thought oh. but the fire was lit i was out of reading i had a new target that i really wanted and the drive and the passion to do that journey. It's 137 miles from my house in Essex, and on a Friday it can take up to three hours. It's about two and a half hours of no traffic, but the M25, when's it never got no traffic? So you're looking at a three hour trip on a Friday. So uh, to do that sort of mileage, you've got to have something big or something you really want. I've got that sense of achievement, you know what I mean, if I do catch it, so the drive was there. So I've come back the following week, lake was busy again, couldn't get in any decent areas, so I went back in that bay, big southwesterly wind was coming in, I thought, ah, oh, this is ideal. It's not that deep, to be fair, in that bay, and uh, the weather was getting cold. So on the Saturday, I thought I'd have a little walk about, I walked down the far end of that bank, inside like this corner, and I took a rod with just a lead, bit of braid and lead, so I've had lead about, I was looking for deeper water, and I found it in a, in a swim further down that bank, and also, the, swimming, the swim that I was leading about in, I chose that swim specifically because the bank there was just grass, right? Nice grass, no one's set a baby up on it for a long time, it looked unfished, and now that's what I need, if I'm fishing that far away at weekends, I need to be going in the swim that ain't got much pressure, where I know I can get back in. If I start baiting it, I'll get back in there. So I've done that, I moved on a Saturday. Uh, I met a geezer that weekend. He bought me a kebab and four cans of Stella from the local kebab shop. The weekend before, my first weekend, I met another two lads and they bought me a kebab as well. So it was a, uh, it was a good welcome. Right, everyone was well happy with my Burfield common capture. I was like, well done, Greg. So, I'm two weeks in the trot, two weeks on the trot, I've had a kebab ball for me. But it was that Saturday when I moved. I was setting up, I had two lads with me talking to me, and uh, I didn't see no fish. The only reason I'd moved was purely for the fact there was grass, unworn ground, and deeper water. So I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll target this for a bit, I'll start baiting it, and then uh, see how it goes. And uh, as we're talking and that, I'm setting up. A fish has boshed at him. I was like, mate, it's October now. And if you see a fish in that sort of t that sort of time, you know what I mean, October time, there's a chance you can get, say, a rock in and they'll stay there for the winter. So I didn't catch nothing that weekend. But when I left on the Sunday, I put 10 kilos of boilie out. And that was my, that was the, that was more of a drive to get back, you know what I mean? I've baited a swim, I've got something now. I've got my marks, got my spots marked up. Two different areas. One area, I had two rods on the same spot. <clears throat> the other area, just one rod, but I'd stick five kilo in each spot. And then the following weekend, I was buzzing to get back because I've got something to go on. And that's, a lot of my angling is based around that sort of stuff to make me go, you know what I mean? I've, I'm doing something and I'm hoping it's gonna pay off, so. I was buzzing to get back to the following week, so it's my third weekend now, I'm back in that swim, got down on the Thursday I think this time, got in the swim, put some bait out, nothing, done two nights, nothing, and then on my third night on the Saturday, I've managed to bite, my first bite from the lake, and it was, um, yeah, it turned out to be a really nice fish, it, it looks a lot bigger than what it was, I had to reweigh it, I weighed it twice because I couldn't get my head around our it wasn't a mid 40. Like I got it in the net and I was like, wow, like that. that's a mid 40. And uh, it wasn't, it was 38 pound, eight ounce. So we'll check that out, got some footage of that. Right, third session on my new water for the autumn and winter. I've gone and got my first carp. It's a proper one, I know. 38 pound, eight ounce. Quite a round one. Got some lovely starburst scales on this wrist of his towel. Yeah, a bit lively, but buzzing to get the first one under my belt. It's always the hardest one, isn't it? It's got its autumn colours on it, and it stops flapping about. Look at the colours on that. That's a right nice one, isn't it? Proper chunk. 
So yeah, we're gonna uh, sit back now. I've seen a couple more show. I had this uh, about three o'clock this morning. I heard one show when I was uh, having a fag and out after. And another one showed just now. So fingers crossed we'll get another one. 60 pound one, yeah? <laughs> Put her back then. All right. Got to do a water shot with this one. Look at that. Proper nice carp. One thing I want to point out to you all. You remember this from my last campaign? I caught that fish, my first carp from here. On that. Bailey chops rod. The Burfield common rod. It's always my left rod. It's the lucky charm that. It's come back into use. Thanks, Bailey. The old boxer. Start packing up soon and uh, I'm gonna put some bait out. Got 10 kilos of sell, gonna let them have it. Like I said, I'm not here next week, I'll be here the week after. It's all about balance in this game, isn't it? Fishing and normal life. I finally got that. <laughs> it was just fishing, fishing, fishing. Now I've got a girlfriend and a dog. I knew I'd catch. This is my third session and I knew I'd catch this session because I can't come back next weekend and it's going to torture me not being able to get here. As it does, you know. If you're that tuned in, you're fishing and you've got to be there every weekend when you miss a weekend, it does hurt. But my girlfriend's 30. It's only 30 once. So we're going to go out and celebrate. Try to anyway because this coronavirus is locked down everything, in it? Essex is locked down, London. Joke, mate. You know what I mean? But we'll have a good time either way. I might see you next week then in London. See how it goes. Make me old Becky famous. <laughs> Proper brute of a carp. And sort of like I had it just before it got light and I sacked it up like put it in a retainer in front of me swim and it's quite a shallow ground right so I had to wade out of the storm pole and stick it there so I'm up at first light when I got that fish in and I've just seen like the opposite bank they call it the benefits bank right so there's about five bivvies there and they've all got they're all looking at me putting this fish out and I later found out they was uh, looking at me through binoculars all right. I did release it in the swim next door, hoping I'd get away with it. But from that point on, I thought, I've caught a fish from a swim that don't get fished much, obviously, because it's, it's not warm, the ground and that. So I thought I've got to be a bit more covert here, and I've got to try and do stuff on the sly, and not tell anyone I'm catching, because if people find out I'm catching, it's a busy lake, busy club water, and they're going to go in there. Especially as it gets colder, and we're going to the winter months, fish do normally become more localised in areas and if I'm catching like, it's going to get fished in it so I thought I've got to be covert I've got to play the game so that's what I've done and that, that weekend when I caught I thought I know I'm going to catch this weekend I've done three weekends on the bands but I know I'm going to catch this weekend because I can't make it back the following weekend you know what I mean I've put 10 kilos out on the Sunday when I left after that fish but the following weekend, it was my girlfriend's 30th birthday, right? So I weren't returning. And if you miss a weekend, it feels like you've missed a month, right? When you're trying to bait something or you're trying to get your head, head into a new water. So anyway, I've, I've gone out for my bird's birthday, went up London. It was sort of half locked down, but on her birthday, conveniently, they lifted everything, right? So I've ended up spending a fortune on her. We went to Covent Garden. Stayed in a nice hotel. I sat out at the hotel at the birthday and that banners because I'm a good boyfriend like that. And then we've gone out to Covent Garden, uh, some club. We had we had like this pizza, like an Italian restaurant, but it's a club as well called Bunga Bunga. And little did I know, I've booked her a strip club for her 30th birthday. So it was great. Got the old fake taxi down there. So um, yeah, fake taxi on route. Strip club by night, and yeah, I was uh, living the dream. So yeah, Bunga Bunga, Covent Garden, check it out mate. It's not actually a strip club, but 
after being locked down for ages, it might as well have been, judging from what I was seeing. So it was a good weekend, and obviously the following week, I was buzzing to get back. Although I'd missed a week, it was, um, I had my mate Lenny on there, Lenny Hedges, his Burfield boy, 210 Len, now uh, commonly known as Empty Basket, because he was fishing up, was sitting on a benefits bank, we was there every weekend together, updating each other on that, and he opened his pot noodle, right, a Bombay bad boy, and it said, the stars are aligning, right, and uh, and he said to me, he went, ah, oh, I've got all three rods, I've got all my eggs in the same basket, right, all three rods in the same spot, and I went, alright then, if you blank tonight, your new nickname's Empty Basket. You've put all your eggs in the, in the same basket. If you blank, you've got an empty basket. So that night, that weekend, he blanked and uh, he become Empty Basket. But for me, that weekend was quite a good one. So obviously I'm now on covert missions, right? Lenny knew about my first fish. A couple of others found out about the first fish through binoculars. But now this weekend, it's a full moon. Done two nights. The first night, again, nothing. Second night, Right now I've put about five kilos of boilie out, second night I've had a bite and uh, followed by another bite and to be fair I thought mate like, this is it, it's going to go off, I mean I've had two bites in a night and now no one's going to find out about these, people all right on this water, I'm not going to name it out of respect for the anglers there because it's a club water, it's busy and I don't want to name it, people no doubt will name it for me, people know where I'm fishing but it's best off that I don't name it out of respect because everyone I've met on this lake they're all decent people they all respect me I respect them there's no dramas which is good everyone's everyone's sweet to be fair so I don't want to upset them so this lake will be called Jurassic Park all right it's near the Jurassic Coast and it's full of big carp I'm not going to tell you the stock I think there's about 100 carp in there some really big ones obviously the one I want is 60 pound so that's why I'm there, I want a 60 pound mirror. Where'd you go from Burfield? 60 pound mirror after a 60 pound colonnade. So yeah, that weekend, it was um, like full moon like I said, and yeah, it went off. So we'll check out a bit of footage of that. I ain't got much footage. Like I said, it's diary, it's not a normal one. It's gonna be more talking about it because it's come to an abrupt end, obviously. Good morning from a wet and wild, windy one. That's a, a couple of fish in the darkness. So, um, judging from last time I was here, I had that 38. There were a few boys um, looking at me with binoculars and that. So, I've got a little stash up here. I'm going to get my fish out now, show you what we've got. But I've stashed them elsewhere. Look. Walk down the bank. Next swim. Second fish in the campaign. It's a proper nice scaly one. It's like a stocky to be fair. Well, very nice. Very welcome. But we've got another one in the uh, sling. It'll be bigger and it's common. So we'll get that out now. I'll show you. What we got here is a lovely 31 pound common. My cameras are playing up a bit, mist in the uh, lens and that. It looks blurred, so apologies in advance when this gets edited. Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, buzzing, second carp of the session. Third one altogether, and there's someone walking about, so we've got to put this back. I'm gonna get cold. Right, turn up. Right, we're back in safe, the safe zone, yeah? The bivy, because there's someone walking about. As I was walking down to show you the fish, where I stashed them, there's a geyser unloading his car, in the car park. So um, basically, I don't think you saw me. I hope you don't, because I've done it all proper on the slyre. I've stashed my fish up elsewhere, swim next door, further down the bank. So the people obviously can't see me, because last week, there were binoculars out watching me get the fish out of the water putting it back and that so I thought this week if I do catch I've got to uh, play the game a bit so, so I did and uh, I think it paid off right but the photos terrible the video footage terrible we've got a storm at the minute full moon last night 31st of October Halloween 
proper big winds, been blowing a gale all night, pissing it down, but the carp are fed. I've done three nights, that was my third night, and I had two carp, 24 pound, two ounce, scaly one, and a 31 pound common, also two tench off um, yeah, two different spots. The spot I caught from, not last week, it's my bird's birthday, wasn't it? Week before, 38, I caught that from a different spot, but I caught these two carp from last night, so I've got two areas that I can get rocking. So yeah, Jurassic Park is going to be uh, eventful hopefully. But yeah, buzzing with that. And uh, yeah, Sunday now, I've got to go home, go work tomorrow for a week. Get back down Friday, but I'm going to put some bait out. I might have a kip actually before I go home. It's only early, it's about eight o'clock now. Half seven, eight. I've been up, the wind's been terrible, the rain. I've had to like, batten down the hatches, mate. Doors it right down. I've like, like, it's coming straight at me. But uh, yeah, it's all good. And uh, well happy with the uh, result at the minute. Bites coming in darkness, so just full light and that. So I think it's game over at the minute. But you never know. Conditions like this could be on for another one. Let's hope so. Yeah. Your alarm is bleeping away. No, mate. No, ain't your empty basket. Surely, fucking someone's had something like this weekend. Yeah, these conditions, mate. Something must have got caught. Yeah. You'd bet fucking, yeah, you'd bet everything on it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like you say, all them big fish around the world and country coming out, mate, and then... <laughs> yeah, no, nothing out of here, mate. It's mental. <laughs> Everyone's everyone's got an em just everyone's just got an empty like, basket then. When you're yeah, mate. But that's what big fishing's about, isn't it? Mate? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll leave your church. All right, you empty basket. Yeah, I'm on. Tada! Find out if anything's been out. I'll let you know. Yeah, if anything's been out, let us know, mate. Mm. Yeah, All right. I'll catch up next week or something. Yeah, sweet. I'll be back down Friday. Yeah, I'll probably be Friday as well, mate. I'll, like, I'll probably have Thursday at home, I'll go and just do two nights, because it's literally, I think, like, seven degrees. Yeah. And this valley, he's always a couple of degrees colder, mate. Yeah, mate. Have you not noticed down this valley, like, your little bugs and that, mate, are, like, fucking dinosaurs, like, massive. <laughs> Jurassic They're Park, like, son. Yeah. 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 The water, Dad. Jurassic Park, mate. Right? Living a dream on Jurassic Park. <laughs> Yeah, being covert is no good for your photography and videography skills, is it? Misty lens, two carp in the morning, first light, you know what I mean? Ruined the pictures, but it didn't matter to me. Video footage and pictures don't matter. If I'm chasing one carp, even if I have to put the fish back with no photo, if it's going to blow my cover, then so be it. I want that end result. I'm always channeling one way track, one way minded to that finale, the ultimate. If I didn't have to take photos, if I couldn't take photos of all my fish leading up to it, then so be it. If it made my ultimate achievement at the end become reality. So yeah, I do have to apologise to my old mate Lenny for um, getting him a bit of exposure on the Ellis Diary. The old full moon, can't believe nothing's been out, you know what I mean? I thought I'd record the phone call out of uh, just to be a bit funny with him, so yeah bit of banter in the video, always goes down a treat, so Lenny's sweet mate, he's a good mate of mine, good good mate on Burfield, good mate on here, and uh, we're only messing about, but the first time he's going to see that, he's on here, so I do apologise Lenny. <laughs> now as you can see I'm in the full swing of covert missions, stashing up my fish elsewhere and that, you know what I mean, like right, next swim and that, so it's all good on that front. I feel a bit confident that I can now. Nah, nobody found out about those two carp. Lovely uh, 31 pound common, which is quite rare in there. There's not that many commons, it's mainly mirrors. And a little stocky, 24 pound. Just found out that was stocked 12 months ago. And uh, I think it was 18 pound when it got stocked, so it's doing good weights. And I ain't surprised in a water like this. It's a 55 acre big pit, and it breeds big, big carp. So mega chuff with those two. The following weekend, obviously I baited after and that, the following weekend I blanked and um, yeah, I thought oh no, maybe it's over, you know what I mean? The following weekend after that I blanked again and I was still baiting, still sticking with it 
some of the top swims now were becoming free. It was getting a bit colder, getting later on into the year, uh, getting closer into the winter, now November, end of November. And I was thinking, maybe like, maybe it's time to move into a popular zone where I can actually get where the fish do get caught. But then I thought, oh, I've put so much bait in this swim now, I've just got to stick at it. So that's what I've done. And uh, ended up having a couple of people regular people fishing either side of me or one to the left or one bit round the corner and it was the line pressure like although they're not in the swim people leaving the swim to me out of respect because they know i've been doing my thing in there but they was going next door or around the corner a bit and it's when you've got three lines that side three lines coming out that side and my i was fishing with one rod a lot of the time to keep the line pressure down just just for that fact because if you have nine lines in that corner then it's going to blow up in it like and that's eventually that's what happened but I've had another session in there I filmed a little bit of footage with this one so we're going to go back to that and it was it was a start of saying that could have progressed if the angling pressure either side of me would have dropped as it hopefully would have in the colder months so I was praying that these anglers would fizzle out as it got colder and I'll be left on my own so I stuck with my guns and baited and baited and then this is the end result. Right, I've got to be double quick here. My mate Lenny from Burfield is distracting two people. They're right next to me, chatting and that, next swim. So he's distracting them while I've got this fish out. I'm full fish now, pretty similar to the first one I had, the 38 and a half. This one's 38, bang on. Mental carp. Little cut on his towel. Yeah. Oh, tensed up. How's that? Proper winter colours. End of November now, 29th of November. It's angry. It ain't gonna let me do a video, is it? Here we have it, quick look at the other side. It's worth both sides. It's a feisty one. I've done my photos. I don't want to be filmed. You don't want to go on YouTube, does it? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get caught out with slimy jumper now. This one's for you, Lenny. Top man. Empty basket. Done me well. Thank you. Let's put her back. Good boy, Lenny. That was mental. <laughs> Look how close these boys are. Fucking. People either side of me, but yeah. Got it, I think I've done it without getting seen. <laughs> the joys of a uh, busy lake, mate. Fucking hell. I mean, you can't even fart without waking him up next door. <laughs> oh. the big pit, it's come well. Yeah, obviously, lost one last night. Got me weeded, cut me up link. I've been mate half a year. And uh, yeah, about nine o'clock. Felt like a good one. And then, yeah, weeded up, just come in, solid. And then just ended up with a big ball of weed, cut up link. So, not good. And then, yeah, early hours this morning. Got another bite, same rod, and it was a 38 panda. I thought it was the same one as last time, I was just gonna unhook it, flop it back, because I'm here for a certain carp, and a 38 panda, it's big, like, well, welcome, but if it's gonna give me game away, I'd rather it not. So I'm doing well in this swim, I've had four now, lost one. Just spoke to Geezer, he's walked past, been fishing here all year, and he's had three. So, some people only have one a year, apparently. So to come on in October, and now it's the end of November, so I have four and lost one. I'm doing something right, mate. But yeah, it's uh, I don't need to quiet down a bit. I'll start moving about if I start blanking, but I'm gonna put some bait out now, get home, and uh, get back next Friday. I've been getting in this swim every every Friday night, getting my rods out after 10, so hopefully I didn't blow my cover, because if I did, then I ain't getting back in here. It's getting into winter now, right? won't be long and if I can keep the fish here it's going to be good but if other people start jumping in here when I'm not here it's going to ruin it 
So that's why I'm a bit secretive. A few boys on here watching this, I'm not cock. It's just, uh, it's just we got to do to try and do well these days. Busy waters. But a full moon last night. When I had them last two, the common and the mirror, shit photos of them. Trying to rush them before people saw me in the morning. But yeah, that was a full moon. And this was a full moon, and I got two bites again. Same rod. They like a full moon on here, definitely. But yeah, let's put some bait out. Rock back to Essex. Hopefully next week there's no one next door. Someone next door down in this room and all that. Basically, <laughs> Lenny was chatting to them there. They all stand outside, three of them. I've got, that's my photo section. Yeah. And down here. In the bushes, mate. So I retained it and I stuck it back there and all. <laughs> so you come out of bushes. Got that. Covert operations, yeah. <laughs> uh, rolled on the big one, eh? Get out of here. Little update before I leave. I'm just spamming some bait out, like I do every Sunday before I leave. And uh, there's a geezer watching me. So I'm obviously spamming bait out in the wrong zone. So we can cast on to that instead of my areas. <laughs> oh, the fun and games of the big carp game. Beautiful morning. It's lovely, isn't it? Wish I could stay here, but work calls. Time to really play the game. Why is watching? Cat pole dog. Stick one in the edge, son. Cast to that one. <laughs> It's like a kid's playground, isn't it? Carp fishing. Always up against the next man. And, uh, another thing I do on a Sunday, stick a load of boilies in the edge. That way the swans come in and no one can fish the swim. <laughs> what do we have here then? Old Mr. Swan and a duck. <laughs> Two ducks. Use nature as your friend. Top tip. Everything can help. Go on. Sell, lad. Get on a sell. <laughs> uh, they'll be there for hours. Fishing for a certain carp. I mean, you've got to do things like this to give yourself the better odds, mate. Um, yeah, we're going to go now. <clears throat> Cheerio, lads. Ta ta. To TFN. <laughs> Obviously, I've mugged Lenny off previously, and now I've. Uh, he was fishing a swim up the other end of the lake and I've had this fish, this 38, and I thought, oh, there's two people, right, next to me, 20 yards away, talking to each other, facing my BV, and I'm standing there with a fish in the bushes in a retainer, and I'm thinking, oh, how can I get this out, out the water, into the photography zone, without getting caught? So, Lenny had a Burfield work party that week, like it was a Sunday, and what, what I've got to say is, that was a full moon again, like I said, and I had two bites, right? So they like a full moon on there. But Lenny came round, he, was, he had to pack up to go to Burford, obviously, so he's come round, and he's come round purely to distract the other boys in the swim next door, so I could get my fish out, photograph it, film it on the slider, and stick it back without them knowing. Magically, right? It happened, right? I didn't, I didn't get caught. No one even knew about that. Only Lenny knew about that carp. So I've had four carp now and lost one in a lake which is well known to be difficult. And to catch four carp in a whole year, you've done well. You've done really well. So to have four carp from October, middle of October, till like the end of November, I was on for saying. But after that session, I kept going back, baiting it. 
like people either side of me, sometimes there'll be one on the left, sometimes there'll be one on the right, but I just stuck with it, fishing one rod or two rods, it depended what I felt confident on, because I'd, I'd had fish from both spots now, so they was both working, but there's a, there's, a f there's a thing I'll do on a busy lake, and I do it for one reason only, I know I'm going to get sheeped up, people are going to jump in that swim, so I fish areas that ain't necessarily in my swim, because I know someone's going to go in my swim, so I pick areas which are borderline out of my swim, so I can hit them from another swim, so if there's someone in another swim, either side, and they're there first, I'm taking a piss, right, because I've picked these spots to hit them ready for when I get sheeped, yeah, but this lake, they're too nice, they're too kind, so they've left me to it, they've stayed out of my swim, but gone either side, so now I can't even fish my spots, because they're in their swim, right, <laughs> and now I'm thinking, oh, oh. the plan was for them to go in my swim, so then I've got the back up, but oh, going next to me and stuff, it just, it ruined it, but I carried on the best I could, and, um, I was actually thinking, if they don't move soon, I've got to move, I've got to take my fish and elsewhere on that pier, and the, obviously the big swims, big long range casting swims where they're popular, they do do fish in the winter, they were becoming free now, so I thought, that's it, I've got the new amplifier rods of Avid, the long range casting rods, got a load of whiplash, and I thought, that's it, I'm going to spool up ready, and I'm going to hit it hard, go in the main swims, hopefully catch a few over the winter if they don't move and what happened next was a bit of a kick in the nuts we had another lockdown which we're in now and it meant no night fishing days only i can't go fishing i've got no local waters i've got to do do my fishing locally which i can't so it's sort of my fishing's been been taken from me at the minute so i thought i'd release this diary it's not the usual one, it ain't, I didn't have much footage, I didn't get any other footage of the lake, I'm mean, just in one swim, I wasn't going to put this diary out until I was done, when I caught the big one, if I didn't catch the big one I wouldn't, wouldn't put this diary out, but I've learnt now from how this, how this water is, I can't fish the same swim constant, because of what happens, like people come near me and stuff, or go in the swim when I'm not there, I've got to move about more, so... The plan was to go back next winter, after I'd done this winter, but now, after losing this winter, I'm going to go back once they've spawned. Although the fish I wanted, for, for being £60, it won't be £60, it'll be spawned out, probably a mid-50, but, mate, I'm happy with that, you know what I mean? And there's a few other 50s in there that I can catch, and I, I'm hoping in the summer, the fish are more spread, I'll see them in the edges, I'll get in the bays and stuff, I'll have a good chance of catching. So I'm looking forward to the summer on there. After they spawn, hopefully, because the reason I'm not doing the spring is because it's busy and I ain't, I ain't gonna stand a chance on a walk like that, living three hours away. So it's come to an end and a bit gutted, but I'll return. I'm buzzing to get back. I've sorted out my spring fishing, a bit more locally and I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to be on there until end of May probably, and we're going to hit this place again for revenge, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I got revenge on Burfield, they locked it down from me, I couldn't fish there, and now they've done the same with this place, so I'm going to go back hungry, hopefully catch one. Now I've had a bit of a scare uh, recently, like a couple of days ago. And uh, I've come down with a bit of a cold, don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but I was eating a pizza the other day and I thought, the only reason I get this pizza, the old classic Donna Deluxe from Artemis in Corringham, it's got Donna meat, jalapenos, red onion, stuffed crust, and I get it because it tastes well nice, right? And I was eating it and I couldn't taste it. I had, a, I had a cup of coffee, couldn't taste it, I've had tea, couldn't taste it, I've lost my sense of taste, so I thought, mate, I've got, I've got to get a COVID test, because that's one of the symptoms, isn't it? So I've got a COVID test, and I said to me, bird, like, I can't do 10 days on my own, but like, I'm going to be putting my air out, you know what I mean? I said, if I've got it and I'm positive, I'm going to start writing a book, because um, it's something I want to do in the future, write a book, and what better time to do it? when you're stuck indoors for 10 days. But I've got my results back today, and thankfully I'm negative, which is all good. 
and I won't be writing a book but put in the comments below if you want me to write a book because I'm a bit iffy at the minute like, I don't think I'm going to start with my first carp how I got into fishing and all that I'm just going to jump straight in on the big carp scene and there's 10 years of that 2010 from Cleveland Mere all the way to 2020 on Burfield so there's a lot of big fish obviously I'll do an intro talking about how it started but I won't be doing chapters on all that because that's I think to me that's a bit boring people want to hear what I'm doing you know what I mean big carp wise so te the 10 stretch from Cleveland Mere to Burfield so if you want a book I'm going to do it one day but I need to start it so to get a bit of enthusiasm and people actually want it I might start a bit quicker so let me know in the comments below and hopefully I won't see you in the spring I'll be seeing you in the summer this this will be the last edit diary for a bit because of what I'm going on next strict publicity bam you won't see or hear of me now for six months probably <laughs> so it's been emotional everyone look after yourself sorry this edit diary is a bit boring and talking but it's just a little update it's a half it's a half an Ellis diary basically because it's either that or nothing so I hope you all keep yourself safe you'll get out if you're doing day fishing fair play to you and good luck for the spring ahead if we can uh, carry on doing what we're doing so until then I'll see you on the other side